Well, good morning, my Pleasant Hill family and all of those who decided to join in with us this morning. Uh, I just know that you are ready. This is the first Sunday in the month of September. The year is moving by fast, but I just know that God has been doing great things throughout this year. This is the year 2020, and even though it's almost over, we have learned some things, we have seen some things, and God has helped us to see clearly some of the things that are going in, that are going on around this world. It's been challenging, but it's been revealing. Uh, this year of perfect vision, God has opened our eyes, have allowed us to really peek into and behind the curtain on some issues and some situations that will help us to be better Christians and will help us to look at life from a different perspective. I want to just say this morning, we've learned even through this pandemic that we can live without some stuff. We can do some things a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Um, we have an opportunity to, to reprioritize some of the things we do, some of the places we go. And I just want to encourage you to continue to seek God, but always allow him to be the priority or the first part of your life. Amen. Just want to make sure that you know this morning that um, as we look out, some things in our jobs, some things in our homes, some things with our families um, have truly changed. And when these changes are happening, we have to see what God is saying to us in the midst of these changes. So I just want you to know this morning that I truly believe that God is speaking to us during this quiet season or during this um, quarantine time or during this lockdown, shutdown time, that our time should be spent with him, critically seeking him for direction and for vision as to what he would have us to do, not only regarding ministry, but regarding our own personal lives. Amen? So I just know that I've learned that I can do without a lot of things. I've learned that life is precious and life is fragile. I've also learned that um, you don't have a lot of friends. Real friends are few. And so hold on and cherish those friends and family members that you have and continue to communicate and continue to love like never before. This morning, I think I got a powerful word from you. I've been looking to the Lord and searching, searching the Lord for what he would say to us on this Sunday morning, on this communion Sunday morning, this first Sunday. And I pray that you are ready. I pray that you have gotten your elements together um, because at the end of service, we're going to have communion. Give you an opportunity to break bread and to drink wine together. So I pray you pull those instruments together so at the end of service, you won't be running trying to grab some things so we are ready to roll. Um, if you're kept, keeping up with our app, uh, we made some announcements so you can see what we should be doing and prepare ourselves for this morning's service. Amen? So in Psalms 48, it says something like this. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And I should be able to tell how great your God is by how great your praise is. Somebody's wherever you are, see, see, don't worry about your children. Don't worry about the dog, the cat. Don't worry. Let, let this be about you and God. Because um, if he's an okay God, then you ought to give him an okay praise. And if he's a good God, then you ought to give him a good good praise. But if he's a great God, you ought to give him a great praise. Our God is a great God, and he deserves a great praise. So God, we praise you this morning. God, we bless you this morning because you are our God, and God, we want to hear from you on this morning. Praise the Lord. Well, let us pray again. We're going to jump into the word on this morning. We bless God for everyone who's tuned in all around the globe to hear what God will say on this day. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for a good night rest. God, we thank you for such a beautiful weekend, Lord God. And then, God, we just thank you because this Labor Day weekend, we have an opportunity to sit back and to relax and to enjoy family and friends. And then, God, we have more time to spend with you. So we just praise you, God, for what you are doing in us and through us. We praise you, God, for all our Bible study lessons and how you're just connecting us one to another. God, we thank you for the communication that we have one to another. And then, God, even on this morning, I pray, God, that you would touch your people in a special way. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their ears. God, calls them to be hearers of your word, but not only hearers, God, but to cause them to be doers of your holy and written word. God, I ask now that you begin to touch me. Decrease me now, God, that you might be increased. Remove me from self, God, so that you may they may hear your voice and not my voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then, Heavenly Father, I ask that you give me perfect record of your scriptures, illustration, and direction, that I may be able to impart your word unto your people. So, God, we bless you on this morning, and we do thank you on this morning for what you will say and for what you will do in your people. These are all things we ask in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. It's in his name we do pray. 
And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles in your hand. Amen. Or grab your electronic devices and go with me to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. We in there run to that 16th chapter. John, the 16th chapter. And slide your finger all the way down to that 33rd verse. John 16 and 33. Praise the Lord. When you're there, signify by saying amen. And when you're there, give us a thumbs up. And we're going to be ready to roll. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the Gospel of John, in the 16th chapter, and that 33rd verse, you will find these words written. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations or trouble. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I want to talk to you this morning just for a little while from the subject. We are overcomers. Praise ye the Lord. We are overcomers. God, we thank you for being an intentional God. There is no coincidence that we are where we are at this particular hour, in this particular season. There is no coincidence that we are where we are at this very moment. You lead us even when we don't know you lead us. You guide our footsteps. You order our steps. You order not only our steps, but you also order our stops. So no matter what you say, no matter what you do, the answer from us to you, God, is yes. Glory to God. Our, our answer to you, God, is yes, because we are overcomers. Let me preface my subject this morning by saying this. Even as we talked about in Bible study earlier, um, Whoever has your ear, praise the Lord, has influence on your future. And I'm going to say that one more time. Whoever has your ear, praise the Lord, has influence on your future. The right doctrine provides the right practices. Hallelujah. Good information provides good results. Just as well as bad information or poor information provides poor results. I want to try to reach you this morning, and I'll just share with you, because there are so many stories in the Bible where good people had bad information and made bad decisions. Uh, one good example of this would be the story of Adam and Eve. Most of us know that story. Adam and Eve would be an example of good people. Praise the Lord. But they were evicted from the Garden of Eden because they had poor information. God created them, and what God created, God created, he said it was good. On the first day, he went back and he evaluated what he made, and he said, it is very good. He looked at the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, and everything that God made, he said was good. So Adam and Eve, we know by scripture that they are good people, but then the information that they received from Satan, or what the Bible at the time called the serpent, praise the Lord, provided them bad information, and the bad information he provided them caused them to be evicted from the Garden of Eden. That's just one good example of how good people can be influenced by bad information. Another story would be the children of Israel. We know that they were good children because God delivered them out of Egypt, but watch this. They sent out 12 spies to spy out the land that God had given them, God had chosen for them, the land that was going to be flowing with milk and honey that they were supposed to inherit, they sent out 12 tribes to spy out the land. Two saw God and 10 saw giants. They came back with two different reports and based on the bad information, the children of Israel stayed wandering and meandering in the desert much longer than was anticipated because of bad information even though they were good people. Praise the Lord. They were in a place that was already fixed. The fight for them was fixed. God had already given it to them. All they had to do was inhabit the land. But because of poor information, they were unable to do so at that particular point. Paul says it this way. Uh, when he's writing to the believers at Corinth, and this is in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Do not be misled. Evil communication corrupts good manners. In other words, bad company, Paul says, corrupts good habits and good character. Wonder why Paul is saying that he is 
saying this or suggesting, you may not be aware, hello somebody, that people are influencing you or the influence that people have on you. You may not even be aware of it. But because of the company that you keep, glory to God, it has the ability to influence you whether you are aware of it or not. Wrong voices will lead you in the wrong direction. Wrong voices cannot, praise the Lord, cannot lead you in the right direction. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why Jesus in this particular scripture began to talk to the disciples and the followers about the things that were going to happen. I would just put a footnote here, if you would, that um, the voices that you hear sometimes are from religious folk. Ah, you didn't like that, did you? Sometimes the wrong voices are for are religious voices. And when we hear religious voices, we often want to follow them, but every religious voice you hear is not the right voice. And Jesus helps us because in these scriptures, they're talking about religious leaders. Followers and believers of Jesus Christ, and he wants them to make sure that I don't know what you've heard in the past, and I don't know what people have been telling you, but I want you to hear this from me. Out of all the people you may be hearing, out of all the teaching you may have gotten, this is what I, Jesus Christ, is saying to you as a follower, or as a disciple, or as a believer in me. He says to you, I can't help what other folks say. But I want you to be crystal clear on what I'm saying. And he says to them, I'm telling you this, listen to me. In all these things that are going on, you will have peace by trusting and believing in me. That's just to set the record straight. I don't care what other folks say. I don't care what other, when you trust and believe in me, you you will have peace, peace like nobody else. This peace I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't. Take. He says up front by trusting in me, by believing in me, in me you shall have peace. Hello, somebody. So I'm telling you this to help you. But then he goes further to say, in this world, you shall have trouble or you shall have tribulations. This is going to be uncommon. It's going to be different from what other folk may have said to you. But I want you to know up front that if you live in this world, you will, you shall have some trouble. You shall have some tribulations. Everybody wants you to think that it's going to be an easy ride and you're not going to run across anything and you have a way of getting out of everything. But the Bible says you shall have trouble. And in research, if you identify trouble, trouble really comes in three forms. Uh, the New Testament really describes trouble or tribulations, watch this, as a storm, as a thorn, and as a cross. I'll try not to get too deep into it, but just, just from a snippet, let me just share this with you. I need to discern or understand which one I'm dealing with so I'll know how to respond or how to fight the battle. Um, because I wouldn't fight a cross the same way I fight a storm. Or I wouldn't fight a storm the same way I would handle or deal with a cross. So when you don't discern or understand which one you're dealing with, you may not be fighting the correct way and it'll overtake you because you're not dealing with it the way God intended for you to. Praise the Lord. And let me just help you because a storm and I'll talk about a storm just briefly. In Mark, the fourth chapter, we know that disciples run into a storm. They get on a boat. Storms are temporary. Praise the Lord. These are, these are life storms. They're, they're just temporary. They come and they go. They run into a storm. Jesus is asleep on the boat. Praise the Lord. And they ask Jesus, cares not that we perish? So it seems because Jesus is not doing anything, they think Jesus don't care. Ah, uh, so your actions determine for me whether you care for me or not. So Jesus is asleep. Jesus is resting on the boat. And I know water getting in his face. I know the boat is rocking over. I know he understands that there's a storm, but he's not worried about the storm, but the disciples are. Why are we both in the storm and you worried and I'm not? So disciples ask the question, do you not care that we perish? Just because you are afraid don't mean you are in danger. Huh? Now, see, see, the storm will scare you to death. It will cause you to jump overboard and drown, but the storm not going to kill you. Some storms will push you to kill yourself or to hurt yourself, but just because you are afraid don't mean you are in danger. Jesus says unto them, when 
I'm on the boat with you, oh my God, because I'm on the boat with you, everything will be okay. When you're going through a storm and you got Jesus with you, just know that that life storm is only temporary because Jesus is with you. Jesus speaks to the storm, to the storm and tells the storm, peace be still. And the Bible says the wind and the waves, they obey. And he asked the disciples, why did you doubt? Why are you of so little faith? Ah, those are storms that come in our life. And then there's a, a thorn. There's another type of trouble. Um, in 2 Corinthians, around the 12th chapter, Paul says that this thorn I got was uh, from the messenger of Satan, and it came to me to buffet me. Buffet means to beat me, to, to agitate me, to bother me, to, to worry me. He says, I, I got it. I prayed about it three times. And the Lord's response to me was, my grace is sufficient. Now, if I can just synopsize that real quickly, I would say um, Paul looks at this thorn and it's bothering him. But a thorn is really just to mess with your assignment, not necessarily your life. Whatever God has assigned you to, it, it, it hampers or dampens your assignment. Praise the Lord. But, but Paul says this thorn is bothering me and, and I want to get rid of it. But God looked at him and said, uh, 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 you're going to have to keep this thorn because my grace is sufficient. Glory to God. I, I, I like it because one thing bothered me when I first started studying these scriptures is the fact that it says a messenger from Satan ah, sent that thorn. And so I'm saying Satan sent the thorn so it must have been something bad but God looked at it and God said I like it so I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! See, somebody, somebody, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. The Satan sent the thorn God looked at it. God said, I like it. So I'm going to just leave it there. Because my grace is sufficient. Somebody's still missing. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me define it just a little further. Watch it. Paul said, ain't never been worse. God looks at it and says, you ain't never been better. Paul looks at it and says, ain't never been in so much pain. God looks at it and says, you ain't never been in so much prayer. Don't y'all make me shout this morning That thorn was making Paul better He just didn't realize it you know, Paul says it like this I ain't never been so agitated God says you ain't never been so anointed Woo Be careful That thorn is to help you And what really to hurt you Even though it was from Satan God looked at it Said I like it because it's doing you some good So sometimes these thorns in our life will help us and it will better us not coming to kill us. Thorn won't kill you. It may agitate you. Sometimes say, oh, that bothered me. You know, well, Pastor, that, that's irritating. Well, yeah, I already know it's irritating. It's just to show you that these thorns will come to get on your nerve, but they will not kill you. Glory to God. Did y'all like that? Praise God. I want us to understand that because, again, trouble comes in three forms. Comes as a storm, comes as a thorn, and it also comes as a cross. And the cross is probably the most difficult one to deal with because that means it's inconvenience that you choose to carry because you value your calling more than your convenience. Let me say that again. It's an inconvenience that you choose to carry. Ah, because you value your calling or your relationship with the Lord more than you value your inconvenience. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and the whole world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for me. If any man should follow me, the Bible says, let him do what? First, deny himself Take up his cross and follow me. Woo. So a cross is an inconvenience that you have made a choice to carry because your love for God, because you're anointed, because you're calling, is valued much more than your convenience. Praise you, the Lord. 
Let's push forward. So you got that. You got that. Um, he does not say all of this to them because he wants them to be intimidated. He don't tell them you're going to have trouble or tribulations because of the purpose of intimidation. He tells them this for the purpose of preparation. He wants them to be prepared so that when something happens in your life, you won't be looking around and going, oh man, this is this is abnormal. Oh, oh man, this is this is strange. This is throwing me off. He said, I'm telling you up front, strange things will happen. Trouble will happen. Trials will come. So don't you sit around acting like you weren't prepared for them because now I'm telling you to get ready because if you live in this world, you shall face trouble. Glory to God. I, I, I wanted to make sure you understand that because some things are going on right now just because we live in this world. Coronavirus has hit all of us, whether we like it or not. But because we are in this world, it's here. And we have to deal with it. So, so don't be surprised. He says, he says, watch this. I don't want you to be surprised. Take heart. Take heart means the same thing as be of good cheer, be of good courage. For I, he says, I the Lord have overcome the world. Even though you're going to have trouble in the world, I've already overcome the world. So the things you are dealing with, I've dealt with them and I've already gave the victory. So guess what? We are overcomers because he already overcame. Huh. Jesus is doing what we call re-educating them on what it takes to win. Sometimes we don't understand really how to win. He, he wants them to know how to be victorious even though they're going to face trouble, even though they're going to face trial. He says, in all of this, you are still winners. Ah, oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Uh, let, me, let me help you because I, I know time is moving and the Bible says there's two different ways that we can win. Uh, one way we win is by avoidance. Praise the Lord. I kind of like that way because it doesn't hurt me. Um, one of the avoidance ways is when they had their Passover. And we know that when the death angel came, uh, anyone who had the blood on their doorposts and on the lintels, the, the Bible said that the death angel would pass over them. Praise the Lord. And, and, and so we win because there are things that are going on in our life that God has allowed to just pass over us and don't kill us and don't mess with us. So we win because of the Passover. That's avoidance. You didn't have to deal with it. You didn't have to have to go through it because God allowed it to pass over you. So you ought to give him a Passover praise on this morning. There are some things that could have killed you, could have took you out, but because God let it pass over. Oh my God. Because God let it pass over you. You ought to give him a Passover praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you. Because some things could have took me out, but you allowed it to, to pass over me. I, I love it when the, the, the uh, old folks or some of the, uh, what I would call mum and them, they said that that's a, a hedge praise. I said, a hedge praise? What's, what's a hedge praise? And then you have to go back and look at uh, Job. Somebody somebody missed that. Yeah, the, the Bible says that Satan and Job, I mean Satan and uh, God had a conversation. And it kind of went like this. God says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Mm. There was no mention from God about a hedge. You missed that. There was no mention from a God about a hedge. But Satan says to him, I can't touch Job because you have a hedge of protection around him. And if you remove the hedge, then I can touch him. If I can digress, that tells me that Job is walking around, enjoying life, don't have no idea that God has a hedge of protection around him, and Satan has been trying to attack him Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and even Sunday and can't get through because God, whoo, glory to God, because God has a hedge of protection and he's protecting and protecting him even though he don't know it. Ah, and the only way Satan know it is because Satan been trying to get to him. God didn't tell him I, I got a hedge around him. Satan been trying to attack Job consistently and can't get to Job. Woo! But Job don't even know. He just living life. And God is protecting him. So I want to tell you this morning, some of us ought to give God a head spread. Woo! Because God has a hedge of protection around us. Even the things that should have got to us didn't get to us because God was protecting us. 
Yeah. You know, we ain't been good all of our days. Job had no idea what God was doing, just like us. We're just living our lives. But God has a hedge of protection around us. Not just us, but around our children. Not just it, but around all of us so he can protect us from the adversary, from the, from the evil one who's been trying to attack us. Glory to God. So God, we thank you for your hedge of protection. So rather than complaining, about the one or two things that get that did get to you, you ought to be praising and thanking God for the hedge of protection from all of those things that did not, whoo, that did not get to you because he had you under his protection. That's what we call avoidance. Ah, yes, God. That, that's one way we win by, by avoiding. And then the second way we win is by overcoming. Yes, God. The second way we win is by sometimes you can't avoid everything because the Bible tells us specifically in this scripture, in this world, you will have trouble. So you can't avoid it. It's coming to you. Right at you, baby. But the hard part is there's a way to deal with trouble when it comes. Yes, God. Um, can I just say it like this? If God don't allow you to avoid trouble, it's only because he's going to let you get into it and he's going to step and he's going to step in there with you. Uh, it means that if God didn't keep you out of it, praise the Lord, he's coming in there with you. See, see, watch, watch it. I don't do a whole lot of teaching on the fire of furnace, neither on the lion's den, but sometimes God will allow us to get in the lion's den and he'll shut the lion's mouth because he's in there with us. Sometimes God will allow you to be in the fire of furnace, but guess what? It won't burn you because he's in there with you. And when he bring you out, you won't come out all right. And matter of fact, when you come out, you won't even smell like smoke. Woo! So sometimes you just got to go through it. God won't allow you to avoid it, but he'll allow you to overcome it. So if you have to go through it, or if God don't keep you out of it, it's only because he intends to come in there with you. God, I thank you for coming in there with me. God, I thank you. I used to like to do the jump rope, but it's better when you can do double dutch. When you have a party that can jump, whoo, glory to God. God is always in there with you. Praise you the Lord. For everything that God didn't allow me to avoid. Because he said some things, glory to God, you will have to overcome. And so I know this morning, if God didn't keep you out of it, get ready, get ready. That only means he intended to get in there with you. And if he get in there with you, he going to close the mouth of the lion and he going to bring you out of that smoky place and you won't smell like smoke. Glory to God. You ought to give God some praise right there. Some, sometimes we just have to praise God in the middle of our teaching because God is a good God and God knows what we need. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Because in this world, your word says, we shall have trouble. But Jesus Christ says, I have overcome the world. And because he's an overcome, it makes us an overcomer as well. Ah, yes, God. When trouble comes your way, guess what? All you got to do is look to him, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. And he will cause you to win. He will cause you to be victorious. He will cause you to overcome. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, I feel that because well, guess what? Guess what? J Jesus knows because he's an overcomer. Yes, God. They hung him on the cross. Buried him in the grave. But he didn't stay there. He overcame the grave. Because the Bible says on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Woo! And so if he can get up, I'm encouraged this morning that I can also get up. Praise you the Lord. You may not always avoid trouble, but guess what? If you can't avoid it, God will teach you how to overcome it. So no matter how it goes, either way, guess what? You still win. All I'm saying is, all I do is win. Whether I avoid it, I win. Whether I go through it, I win. Because when I'm with Jesus, I am a winner. All I do is win. Glory to God. When the rain stops falling, I win. When the dust settles, 
I win. When the lightning stops flashing, I win. I win because I am a winner in Jesus. Because he overcame. Then we are overcome. Praise the Lord, somebody. Give God some praise all over this building. If you know that you are an overcome, and you can testify without a doubt that he has caused you to overcome, then give God some praise right where you are. Go ahead and bless the Lord right where you are. Go ahead and just, don't worry about who around you. Just bless him because he deserves the praise. Because he overcame. Amen. We can overcome. Yes, God. Because he got a we can, we can get up. Glory to God. God, I thank you this morning for your word. God, I thank you that we are, we are overcome. I know in this world we shall have trouble. But I thank God you've already fixed it. Because you told us up front, be peaceful in this situation. Be of good cheer. Don't get stressed out. Don't get bothered by. Because you came to tell us, I've overcome the world already. The things you have to deal with, just deal with it. Go through it. Because the victory is already won. Praise you, the Lord. If there's somebody under my listening voice on this morning and you don't know the Lord and the forgiveness of your sins, I can help you to overcome. I can help you to avoid damnation. I can help you to avoid hell by giving your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. If there's one of you who's listening this morning and you're willing to pray that prayer and tell the Lord that you are a sinner and you want to accept him as your Lord and your Savior, that's all it takes to be saved. And then you become and overcome and begin to walk this walk, to love the Lord and to serve him for the rest of your life. And then when you breathe your last breath, we know that heaven shall be your home. Well, God bless you on this morning. God keep you on this morning. Just want to make sure, amen, for those of you who have your um, items already prepared, amen, your elements for communion. We want to transition real quickly into communion, amen. We want to just say that this is a solemn time in the Lord. We want to make sure, amen, that we don't exclude anybody. Uh, communion is for baptized believers, amen. And we want to make sure if you have your elements prepared or anyone in your home or under my listening voice, if you're a baptized believer, you can join in with us on this morning uh, to partake in communion. To take on the Lord through his, his spilled blood. To take on the Lord through his broken body. So as we prepare this morning, go ahead and prepare your hearts and minds um, and let us make ready for communion. The Bible says this way. On the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. The Bible said after the same manner, after they had supped, after they had eaten, he also took the cup and said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood which is shed for many. Drink ye all of it. The Bible gives us some specific instructions that we shouldn't drink, eat and drink unworthily because we eat and drink damnation to our own selves, not discern the Lord's body. And he says, for this cause many are sickly and weak, and some even sleep. So the Lord gives us instructions about how we should do it and how we can avoid destruction, sickness, and death by doing it correctly. So we just want to pray that God will clean us up, make us ready to take on him by his broken blood, his broken body, and his spilled blood. God, we ask now that you will forgive us for things said, for things done, that will cause us not to be in the right relationship with you. God, we ask now that you will forgive us for things omitted and things committed that will cause us, God, to not walk according to your perfect will. We ask now, God, that you will clean us up, our hearts and our hands, that we can serve communion and take on communion, knowing that we're in the right relationship with you. So bless us in a special way, God, so that we can take on you and you be a part of us. Dwell in us, love on us, and let us have communion with you. Your word says, this do in remembrance of me. So we remember you this morning, God. When you're dying on the cross for us, you've given up your life for us. And so we celebrate communion to remember you. Hallelujah. For those of you who have prepared your communion and your elements, if you would, take the bread.
He blessed it. And he broke it. And he said to the disciples, Eat ye all of it. After the same manner, he also took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, Drink ye all of it. For those who eat of my broken body and drink of my spilled blood, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. We give instructions this morning that. The Bible sends them out to the Mount of Olives. And they go out and they just bask in the Lord. And they enjoy and they celebrate the Lord. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go out to, but we do have our several state places. We do have other folks home that we can celebrate in. We just ask that you take the Spirit of God, His love and His kindness, His compassion with you wherever you go. Let the Lord reign in you, with you and through you, as you share your good news with those that you may meet along the way. Well, God bless you this morning. God keep you this morning. It's our prayer. There's one word of announcement. For those of you who may not have downloaded the PHMBC app, we want to encourage you this morning to please do so. Go to your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store and download the uh, PHMBC app. That way you can follow along with us for the information that we're providing regarding updates on the coronavirus, regarding updates on our in-person worship regarding updates on what we're doing here at Pleasant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, as well as you have an opportunity to see our um, Sunday morning sermons, our Tuesday evening Bible study, and our Sunday school lessons that we're posting as well. And then I would, ma'am, if you would, please, ma'am, please, sir, um, there's a give button on that app. If you would just match that give button, amen, and continue to support us with your tithe and your offering. You have been doing so well, and I thank God for you. Those tithes and offering are coming into good ground, and it's able to bless this ministry as well as reach out to others, amen. So we want to encourage you to continue to support in a great way. And for those of you who may not be members of this particular mem uh, fellowship, we want to ask if you would just uh, sow a seed. You're sowing seeds into good ground. And we know that in the needed time, those seeds will pop up to you or come up to you again, and God will continue to bless you. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be, continue to be generous in your giving. We know that we thank you, and we know that God will continue to bless you. I want to just encourage you this morning. We know that the world is still going on, and there's so many things about um, wearing face masks and social distancing yourself as the rules and the policy changes. We know that they're working on vaccines and all of those things. Just be mindful and be patient with wherever the CDC and the laws are taking us, and let's make sure that we are obedient to those laws because it's not only to protect ourselves, but especially to protect others who may be around us. Well, God bless you this morning. God keep you. It's my prayer. I pray this word has blessed you in a special way on this morning. Well, now let us look into the Lord to be dismissed, and we'll see you on Tuesday for Bible study. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you on Tuesday.